All right, so welcome back into the metaverse today. We're going to dive into some of the emerging games, but also games to watch in Q2. Take a deep dive. You're going to love it. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Metaverse Insider. Joining me, of course, is Mirko Dolger, who is the CEO and co-founder over at Unix Gaming. Great to have you back on the show, man, always. Seems like you're in a different hey, place Paul. every time you're here. <laughs> yes, Paul, I would just want to say it's like every time we have to show I'm somewhere else, uh, this time I'm talking from Paris, so yeah, uh, uh, bonjour, yeah. <laughs> I like it, I like it, and uh, uh, therefore an NFT conference, So, and which of course, you know, we're seeing, you know, I'm kind of curious, Mirko, just off topic for a second, are you seeing more conferences this year, or are you seeing conferences consolidate? What are you seeing out there in the in the market right now? I think before it was heavy blockchain uh, um, yeah. and DeFi conferences, and now through NFTs, you have so many conferences and GameFi. Uh, if you think like NFT New York, NFT LA, NFT Paris, you know, every city right. have now an NFT conference. Um, and of course, Paris is a huge one. It's really exciting. Um, and uh, yeah, that, it's doubled up, I would say, you know, like the, anyway, there were so many people in crypto and the massive run on nfts definitely uh, helps to to fill arenas yeah yeah for sure well nfts obviously being uh, the genesis of what we're seeing in the gaming community um one of the bigger ones though of course is axie infinity they dropped their axie infinity v2 the origin uh, project this week or last week very good response so far we've had uh, some of our own team that have played the game had uh you know a tremendous uh fun with it what are your thoughts on Origins and kind of the evolution of where Axie is going right now? Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy the, the facelift, what they put on Axie, because it was pretty much a, a card game uh, with, a, with a, uh, you know, the Axies as a collectible. But I think the facelift and the animations, they're super, I mean, uh, an upgrade for the gameplay itself. You know, if you think about you playing that every day. Um, yeah, I think they, they, there is a, a little bit, you know, a lot of people in the community, basically people who are like maybe already with Axie for two, three years, you know, and supporting them. They are maybe expecting a little bit more from Axie Origin. Also considering that we had kind of a delay because it was like mentioned uh, 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 end of last year. Now it's out, but it's really uh, um, awesome. And at the moment it's the, the uh, season zero basically. So yep. the, the rewards, they are not yet started and the whole gameplay, but there's also a roadmap about these runes and charms, what they built in. And mm -hmm. yeah, and definitely, you know, there's like now um, uh, uh, separation between the mystic axes and, and different gameplays. So yeah, it, it looks awesome. And I think definitely did so far always uh, right decisions in, in their, uh, yeah, in the time being. Yeah. When okay, so when you look at this, obviously this is going to affect to a certain extent, you know, how guilds work. Yeah, and we do know that there is going to be some, you know, obviously some earn aspects of this coming to it. Do, how is this going to affect your approach to Axie Infinity from like a player side of things when it comes to a gaming guild like Unix? I mean, it's it's nothing changed. It's a game, right? And all players they're there, and then uh, at the end, you know, if there's uh, more demand from the player side and they want to play Axie. Of course, we will provide more uh, Axie Infinity uh, accounts, but we will basically lend to the to the players. Um, and uh, we, we still, this is one of the main games, I think still, uh, where people are consistently playing on a daily basis. So um, yeah. not, nothing much changed really from our side. I think when the land game play from Axie Infinity comes out, then it's definitely the whole game from a basically transition to an MMORPG with this open yeah. world. So uh, there we will see a, a massive, um, you know, change in, in the maybe guild direction, how, how we utilize exit. Yeah. And of course, uh, just for, uh, and I'm sure everybody already knows this, if you're following our show, you kind of already understand what's happened. Maybe you haven't got into Axie just yet. It is only PC players right now. Uh, that are on Origin, uh, even though the, you, you get that through the Mavis Hub client. Uh, but they are saying that they are going to make this available on mobile 
uh, over hopefully by year, year, year end, which would be interesting in the sense of going mobile. Do you feel like more and more game developers should be starting more with mobile first, or do you feel like going this route for Axie was a good move going the PC route? I mean, Axie is actually it's also available on mobile, but you know, not through a Play Store or a game uh, Apple right. Store. It's basically, you download the app directly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think in a game with Axie Infinity, it's definitely the mobile option. For this is be the, the right move. If you have a triple A AAA game title with high resolution graphics, I think you yeah. need to start with PC and then you know to, to give give basically the whole nice look to your game. And then because for mobile you need to lower resolutions. So you basically uh, take the clothes off of your game, you know, to make basically a light version and then put it on mobile. So it really depends on how complex, how big is your game. Yeah, for sure. They had a little bit of a, a pushback, I shouldn't say a little, a lot of pushback from the community in reference to the LAN side of this in terms of the strategy, their plan to roll out with LAN. When you look at you know, kind of their overall uh, approach toward rolling this out, here's a tweet you can kind of see on the takeaways uh, of really what they're talking about. But when you look at this and you see kind of the aspect of, of projects like this where they don't necessarily get it right on the first run, but they come back and and readjust in this particular case. We haven't seen this before uh, where a big project like this puts out a project in terms of, hey, here's the rules, here's what we're going to do in land. And then they come back uh, based on the community pushback and, and pretty much change the game again. Do you think that's a good thing? Or do you think that maybe Axie really needs to start re- or putting a lot more thought into how they're rolling out the economy within their game. Um, I mean, yeah, personally, I'm I'm expected a little bit more, um, but just because we have, you know, there is so much hype around X Infinity, you know, right. and they have a large team, they have all the supporters, and and they have a very strong community, and you uh, actually only need to listen you know, basically to maybe make the, the right steps. Um, but of course, uh, maybe it's a it's a bigger plan behind that. But yeah, for, for land, it's it's something what is already available for a very long time, but there's no really a use case. And and you need to wait. And, and you know, it's like, uh, um, even that you, you know, not giving a, even you cannot play yet, but you can maybe like other games building in, in a, a staking function. Because you know the land in X Infinity is also not that cheap, so um, and so far it's only twenty five percent sold on the land, and yep. we're still waiting to get the other seventy five percent unlocked. So yeah, uh, it's definitely something we will see. What's their plan? What you know? When will it be? You know? So yeah, I think I think the key here is again, like any game you know, having the economist in the game architecture, meaning being able to build out the structure, getting your roadmap in place, and making sure you're strategically laying down the groundwork for your players to really kind of, one, embrace, and then two, really flourish uh, in terms of the game ecosystem itself. So that one was one that I was a bit disappointed with in terms of how they've rolled it out. We'll see if they can kind of correct the ship. We're going to try to get Sky Mavis on the show here later this week, early next week, to talk about it, just to kind of give us an update on how the land project is going, how that may roll out, what's, what are some of the attributes we're going to see uh, coming very soon. I also want to jump over to a game you brought to the show today um, on this one. In Mirko, Block Lords, I had not seen this one until you sent it to me when we were on Telegram the other night. Uh, talk to me about this one. Give me an example of where this one is going, why you like this one for Q2. I mean, for me, it's like uh, the dark age, you know, like where, you know, knights and elves and, you know, uh, 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 you know, armies battling each other. That was usually always the, the genre or the, the, the age of games where they have the most uh, um, hype about. I mean, we saw so many um, uh, cyberpunk, super spacey games with robots and spaceships. And if you just go back in history of gaming, and then, for example, World of Warcraft, Warcraft, 
the game itself or you know all these games they've been super super uh, successful and a block lords is basically a strategic game and you have can choose different path for example you can be a knight you can be started as a farmer you know and you can really choose a job you you maybe prefer you don't want to be maybe you're not a, a, an action hero yeah but maybe you like the the, the economy part of the game so block right. lords is definitely a, a, a pretty uh, uh yeah a, a, an awesome game gameplay if you see here you know um attacking like uh, 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 with your with your troops you know you can select and you can go into your villages the the, the graphic is awesome and um also it's, it gives for me all the i all the aspects of a very good uh um yeah rpg or mmorpg how you want to call it and um and also the backing and this is something what i always look at is basically um if you see there is um Marcus Fun Bitcraft and Delphi Digital for example Delphi is always usually they involve themselves right. pretty heavy on tokenomics ecosystems so if they're involved I am always um you know this is like VC funds they really add value and this is something what what we look at you know which which is you know like I, I think in the in the current state the funding is not a problem I think to get the the really the, the good partners on board i think this is something and block lords is it's coming um this year and yeah super excited the community is good we talked to the ceo um he's an ex gamer as me we can talk for hours and um yeah pretty excited about what what uh, what will be delivered from them and yeah that's about block lords I like the uh, the fact that I mean one the the roster of partners that they've got already behind them so that that always is a good sign for it. I would interesting when we were scanning through some of the uh, screenshots of kind of their renderings, they went as far as building out a peerage table, which is unusual in going that deep. So a lot of study went into uh, developing these games, and that's one thing that I always look for is. You know how detailed are the developers in understanding if it's you know, in this particular case historical aspects of you know how that era was. So I think it's interesting to kind of bring some of those things in. So good a good selection. Let's jump over to my neighbor Alice. Uh, this is one that we've been watching for you know months. Really kind of found it back late last fall. Uh, obviously a traditional gaming house. I think they're in Norway or Sweden somewhere. And um, traditional gaming house have some other games. My Neighbor Alice, their first big launch into crypto. And they've got some very key things happening uh, in this quarter. One is their land sale, and then they're introducing their alpha seasons, alpha season one, coming up. So what do you know about My Neighbor Alice, and what are your thoughts on them actually rolling out? with? Because these are pretty big announcements, for, especially for land sale. Um, I mean, they really like uh, they got actually listed on Binance last year, uh, uh, mm -hmm. early last year, and they've been actually a game what they already announced for Steam before Steam banned crypto gaming, and so they were where this already been on the radar. And you know, the thing with Neighbor Alice is, um, if you go and and this is just something very simple, like we go back in history, what is what was working was, for example. Um, uh, Farmville on Facebook was right. one of the most successful apps. And then if you uh, compare also Animal Crossing, and this is, looks like a little bit like that, yep. it's also the most played game, you know, out there. Be it run off uh, uh, Minecraft and all these games. So, and um, the the animations and, you know, the, the model of the game is really going in that direction, you know, and um, of course you can farm your... Um, you know, you build build your village, build your farm, and you know, interact also with other players. So it's pretty, pretty uh, like a more like a social game. But th that's what uh, historically actually always really uh, uh, succeed. And then now, uh, crypto as a vehicle you know, inside is pretty uh, uh, interesting. And I think you know, as the same uh, uh, success as um, Sandbox had in their alpha season one i think uh, uh, um, the same success will have uh, um, alice my neighbor so you will have more people talking about the game you will have seen more footage you know once the alpha is live and i think 
that will be uh, bring the the, the the game more alive and then the, the, uh, it will find the right audience then yeah we we launched our or we, yeah we actually get it, got it launched uh, this week uh, our new metaverse index on the power index mm -hmm. and uh, one thing that and we're trying to figure out which which projects are we going to put in there for that ongoing you know, tracking right now, we're looking at Alice as being one of them because it is kind of become a, a little bit of a stable project from the gaming aspect to kind of get into some of these. So I'm very intrigued on this one as it goes forward, but uh, uh, very cool for sure. And their sentiment has been, we've been looking at it for quite some time. I was trying to pull up our, just our top metaverse gaming. This is our, our current layer of tokens and projects. So we've got Axie Gala. Sandbox Engine, Decentral, are we even flow, but we're getting ready to roll some of the game tokens in here as well. So this will be interesting because we'll be on a on a project where we're going to be tracking sentiment uh, and how it drives price action to some of these tokens very soon. So Alice may be one that we look at uh, adding to that to that index. All right, let's get into um, the next one, which is uh, Animoca Brands, and that is when they are. They seem to be on a shopping spree right now in terms of just buying up houses, <laughs> and I say gaming houses, but they just did an acquisition right here, actually of a company right there in France that you're in. So I was looking at this one, gaming venture capital firm, obviously um, buying up Eden Games, which is the publishers of Gear.Club. This is a new uh, component that is probably going to tie into their Rev Motorsports uh, se sector within Animoca Brands. First of all, what are your thoughts on racing games moving into blockchain? And what are your thoughts on how Animoca is moving in this direction? Um, I mean, uh, racing games, when it's not horse racing games, because they, there we <laughs> see at the moment too many. Um, yep. But let's say Need, Need for Speed or Gran Turismo, this, this is a games people are still playing. You know, it's just like... Right. Uh, uh, playing over over years, same as flight simulators or stuff like that. So, and I think it's a it's a it's a good good uh, uh, acquisition. Um, I, and I think Animoca is anyway, you know, uh, that large. And you know, I think they they are, you know, there's so many uh, gamers they are coming to the blockchain space or they want to be in the blockchain space, and they need. Um, I think they're, they're just presenting their concept basically to Animoca or the people, you know, that's maybe one of the first addresses you you will reach out to. And then Animoca make, of course, their assessment and, you know, and then, you know, definitely it's 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 good to to uh, help them, you know, to uh, right. either funding or uh, acquire the whole game studio. And, um, yeah, to make it basically then transition it over into the blockchain. So I think it's very, very good. And um, I, I really need to, I think, Google it, uh, how many companies at the moment Animoca's uh, acquiring. They're tied in so with a lot. Would be I was good. just looking, yeah, tied in with a lot. I was looking back at the story here, acquisition of plans to enhance the Rev Motorsports ecosystem. So they're looking at it as an ecosystem for this whole um you know, this whole sector in terms of racing games. So this will be an inter interesting one to kind of go because they kind of talk about here in the, uh, you know, in this tweet, Need for Speed. They just mentioned that one, Studio Behind Need for Speed, F1 Mobile Racing, classics like Test Drive, many more. So um, not a bad deal too because it was only a $15 million acquisition, which I thought was a little bit undervalued if you think about just the quality of what they're trying to do in this ecosystem. Do you see this as a strategy now Mirko, where we're seeing a lot of traditional gaming houses trying to make the leap into crypto or play and earn and kind of running into that process of, hey, there's a lot more to this. They need people like Animoco or, you know, Binance Labs or, you know, projects like even like you guys over at Unix, where you can help them through this process. What what is the what are you seeing out there in the landscape right now? I can, uh, I mean, p from our personal experience, you know, how many uh, games or game studios we talk to and um, they really need advice and they really need someone who will take basically the lead. If they are smaller, if they are bigger, of course, they can basically in-house uh, uh, recruit a crypto team or, uh, but still they need kind of an advisory. This is really, really important for the people right. who are in the space. So I think 
it is a huge gap at the moment from from basically from traditional gaming and um I think the, everybody who is like, especially Animoca or, you know, as you mentioned, Binance mm -hmm. Labs, and there's more out there who really take, uh, basically taking on a hands-on role by acquiring or by supporting or by funding uh, kind of these projects. So I think yeah. this is super important. And, you know, then you will see definitely uh, beautiful uh, games from all these uh, projects as well. Yeah, for sure. Another one up here is Steppen. We've been tracking this one. Obviously, it was one of our, one of our metaverse uh, plays, but it, it is one of those move-to-earn games. And they have, you know, a, a little bit of, a, uh, of an NFT play here as well. But what I am finding is that we're starting to see some gamification around the idea of movement and most likely physical fitness. We'll see this maybe in other action sports as well coming into metaverse and uh, crypto gaming. What are your thoughts on where Steppen is going with this? Do you think this is a good category to watch? Um, yeah, definitely. I, mean, I think I think it's a very small niche, you know, move to earn, or this is at at, uh, at least the category where they're moving in. <laughs> and um, so uh, I think they they've been now the, the the first timer, and I think this is like definitely the the largest success in that uh, um, area because we have already projects like Geno Pets is also moved to earn. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with uh, Stephen, uh, definitely they had a huge success. They built on Solana that maybe was also success. The sneakers, you know, can identify themselves with sneakers. You know, sneakers, the young generation, they love to collect sneakers. So maybe that was the, the, was the breakthrough. And then, of course, yeah, um, the, the people who invested in the project as well and maybe supporting the project to make it a, a, a success. And again, it was mobile ready. And you see sometimes, you know, when a game is mobile, how many users can actually be uh, participating there in a very short period of time. Exactly. And um, what we see is that the, the, the token or the, the token burn or the, the ecosystem itself seems like to function. And at the moment, I don't know how this looks like when there's a larger run on it, you know, uh, and but yeah, it's definitely interesting, and I really, um, yeah, uh, it's it's all nice to see that that we have fitness and crypto now also combined. Yeah, yeah, which you, you know just tells me I don't think anything's off the table. I was looking at just some of their numbers as of mid March, they had a hundred thousand daily active users, and that number has doubled since then. So I, I'm one just in terms of their one million downloads. This is a big one. Uh, and then they're creating this whole thing around this Step in 5K plan for uh, this Athens DAO conference, which is uh, one of the Solana-based ba Solana um, DAOs in late May. So I think that's kind of interesting to integrate this into, you know, kind of these events, uh, almost like if you think about it, like marathons, which they move around from city to city. So I, I anticipate we're going to see a little bit of this in the metaverse, but man, for this to get this kind of number for a million downloads and then obviously the 100,000 in uh, in DAUs is pretty uh, pretty imp impressive for sure. Yeah, and, and if you see like what, what 100,000 users have an impact on their token, it was mm -hmm. booming, you know, on, on every uh, chart. And, you know, in other games, you had a million user and maybe you had the yep. same, same uh, 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 reaction on the token. So it's, yeah, this is... Uh, nice sneakers, by the way. So um, <laughs> we're gonna have to get those. I, I don't know if we can turn turn those into real life sneakers. If that's gonna be something like what Boson is doing, where you can create that, I mean, that, that get that anniversary that would component, be, would be the next step. Actually, you know, going sure. in yeah. traditional market, getting brands on, you know, selling sneaker. Perfect. I mean, this is like uh, diversifying your uh, your portfolio or your project. I you like know? it. Hey, let's jump. Last topic, and that is just jumping to uh, launch pads quickly because we're. I want to talk about this maybe for one of our next shows. We're getting a lot of people asking about you know just some of the launch pads out there. I know you guys are getting ready to do something, but of course, GameStart has been one that we've watched for quite some time, uh, and some of the projects they have on the system. And we did see a little movement from Dark Frontiers this last couple of weeks. Um, so there's some of you guys out there that have probably made some you know, some uh, decent little uh, gains on on some of the projects like Dark Frontiers. But Mirko, when you look at just launch pads in general, 
Is this something that you feel is going to continue to explode in terms of growth for the sector? And at one point, I guess, is going to be my question is, when does do the launch pad start to kind of become a little bit more competitive because of the game developers? Or do you think the landscape is just so broad right now in terms of potential talent and creative that we need more launch pads? What's your, what are your thoughts on how launch pads are rolling out? Um, if, I think that we have a lot of launch pads and people think, okay, if, you know, it's something easy to do, I, I open a launch pad. I'm not saying that GameStarter is doing that, but I think uh, people under, underestimate actually a launch pad because it's not only, you know, you have very many factors is building in, you know, especially in the gaming space. So if you have a triple A title, usually they have a, a triple A valuation. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, they, that's not actually ideal for a launch pad. You know, a launch pad is living from good valuations so that, you know, the people who participating in the launch pad basically can, uh, as you saw in game starter, there was always mentioned in the bottom, like how many X basically right. the, the, the investment did. So, and uh, it's, it's more like where you want to put yourself or position yourself. Are you really, uh, are you doing a, a proper due diligence, you know, on that? And um, it's also not launching any game. It's also, you know, after their launch, what is their, their roadmap? Yeah, you know, when is the game live? Because you can invest money now in a, in a game and maybe on that launch, you, there is, it shows you maybe 10x. But is there a listing after the launch? Is there, you know, um, a game coming in the next one month or two months, three months? Is right. it in two years? There's all this factors you need to build in and i think to to uh yeah definitely uh what what we also did in, in for example in our launchpad we we partnered with someone uh, larger in the space for example uh, our partner is dao maker because he have the experience he bring in all this expertise how to basically uh, um you know evaluate these games because there's so many variables you know what you need to consider to to bring them basically uh, um, yeah, to make a game successful, and uh, it's not, uh, a, 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 you know, it's the same what what happened now in the gaming space that, you know, yeah. a, a games coming to the space and looking for a cash grab, and some I think underestimating a launch pad and think, oh yeah, I, I launch you, and then you know, um, because it's like we advising them what's the best to to launch, you know, it's kind of right. a, a very personal uh, uh, conversation here, you know, that we find the best best uh, uh, slot for the audience for you know uh, um yeah what, what their audience want you know so there's uh, yeah. so many things to check in so yeah sorry this was a little bit extended about launch pads but i think um uh, game started they're doing something pretty interesting with the seat and private in, um uh, offer again uh, not every game like that and um if if you if for 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 you know for a high or yeah high x return definitely could be a good investment but usually also seat and privates they're having a longer vesting period so it's right. all you know can be good can be bad you know it really depends on what the people want yeah i was looking at dark dark frontiers uh 36x seed project 76x uh bit hotel 21 and then demol even 20. so i mean just when i look at uh game starter it is one of those that i consider you know one of the pristine uh, launch pads out there in the market. So I'm continuously looking at these just because I start to see, you know, some of these launch pads are, are in the essence starting to reveal some pretty interesting projects. Plus we're starting to see, as we mentioned earlier, just the number of new projects that are coming to the, I think, to the crypto space. I think it's going to be very interesting because I think we've got some winners coming at us right now, especially we may find some absolute stars in the uh, in the next year, uh, very soon, and probably going to happen through some launch pads. So, hey, Mirko, it's always great having you on the show. Thank you so much for stopping in today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. It was a pleasure. Excellent. All right, you guys are tuned in over on the podcast right now. Make sure and jump on to our other podcast, which is Tech Path Crypto. And of course, if you want to find out more and more about what we're doing here on PBN, the best thing to do is jump into the Diamond Circle. It's really easy. It's free. You can just click the link below. That'll bring you in. You'll get a chance to see a lot more of our ongoing 
research, a lot more insights, and we do a couple of emails a week with drops uh, all of our latest content in case you can't catch it all. That's the best way to do it. It's absolutely free for you to join. And of course, if you want to reach me out on Twitter, it's at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on Metaverse Insider. 